to uh you know go back to the soundcloud scene for a minute i mean you know in in uh, i th- i think in most people's estimation like that was a moment that was a wave it kind of came and it kind of went but you know do you still feel like there is you know potential there on that platform and potential in there you know there in that scene is are, is, is, is 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 there still like interesting stuff going on that people are missing out on because they're not paying attention because they think oh soundcloud that's kind of over you think there's interesting stuff going on that fifth? Um, yeah, probably to a degree, you know, but, but I feel like maybe in a way culturally, like all, like, all, all the focus is almost shifted over to like TikTok and like whatever kind of music pops over there might sound like it might pop over there. Yeah, but all right. I feel like art, I feel like SoundCloud is more for artists mm. now than maybe, but I, I know that SoundCloud is definitely in the new generation, maybe not back in the day, but in the new generation, more popping than uh, that mm-hmm. Piff, mm-hmm. I think. I ain't, I ain't trying this that Piff, shout out that Piff. I ain't never dropped nothing on that Piff. I really did. De- I haven't. You won't find one in that It might be like a fake mm-hmm. person dropping or something on that. And I mean, how right now... <clears throat> You know, in what artists that people are listening to or what mixtapes or projects that are popular, you know, would would you say, like, the influence of that SoundCloud wave is still, like, being felt and everything? Um, wait, say that again? You, you were talking earlier about, um, you know, artists like X and people like you who sort of, like, came mm-hmm. out of the SoundCloud scene, the influence that you had, like, still being felt today. And... So you're saying, like, classic albums? I... I I I guess what I'm saying is sort of like in what artists and projects today, you know, do you hear like, oh, you know, that's like an influence from some SoundCloud artist or some artist who was like popular on SoundCloud. You know, it's like uh, is 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 that influence like still kind of like being felt today in a lot of new stuff? Of course, I feel like Lil Peep definitely influenced Mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I mean, it's always going to keep going. You feel me? But it's no such. Influence is everywhere. It's getting to the point where it's hard to understand who it's coming from, where it's coming from, because there's so many different things you're listening to. So I could go listen to, because me, I, I'll listen to a little Peep song, and then you're going to, well, now anybody, you'll listen to a little Peep, Peep emo song, and then you'll go listen to some Juicy J turn in the club song, and then you'll go listen to like some hardcore X. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's all switched up now to the point where you don't know what's coming out after you heard what you heard. Like your inspiration is all over the place, but it is certain people that do sound identical in a sense. Sometimes, you know, speaking um, of X really quickly, uh, one of your most, you know, legendary placements was, uh, you know, on uh, uh, that uh, triple dollar sign, you know, record that you had had done with him. Um, Would you go into a little bit like the process of recording that track and how you guys crossed over and just like what that experience was was like? Pretty much that track I recorded in a studio in like 10 minutes. It was a freestyle. I was just I was just lit with the homie. My homie was on that song, actually. It was it wasn't even X. It was it was just a hook I was recording. I, I he wasn't nobody was on it at first. It was just a beat. I hopped on it, made the hook. Now I let my homie get on the verse, and then I played it for X when well, me and X we was like DMing. Like he DM me back, and we was just cool from there. And we would FaceTime sometimes and like play the game and stuff. Like we would play Fortnite sometimes and like just just talk for hours, you feel me? That was the brother, you feel me? And I never really met him for real in person, but he was, it was weird. It was like, we, it was cause I was his, bro, he was like one of my favorite rappers before I even was popping, before I was up. And then to put me on his album, it, it don't make sense. It's like, it was connected. Like, it was just alignment in a sense, but. You, you never met in person, but you know, do you feel like at this point, technologically and culturally is is that even necessary to like call somebody close or call somebody a friend or call somebody influential because you know as you said you were able to sort of make that connection with him just by talking to him on the internet right i feel like i had a camp connection with him by listening to his music mm-hmm. you feel me it's like especially a lot of fans feel like that you feel me fans feel like they know him like they call him ja you feel me like a lot of fans will call pete gus or you feel me? It's just 
they me and though they never met them once in their lives you feel me it's just they got that bond it's like you can't break that for real, mm. for real. and i feel like even though i never met him it was like he could see that i was inspired by him and he he didn't want to be fake towards that like he kept it real and he he kept his promise like he told me he was gonna put me on that album you feel me Thank you very much for watching this interview clip over on TND Streams. To see the full interview, click on the video link next to my head or down below, or hit up the link to subscribe to the channel or see our Patreon page to support what we do and get some extra bonus monthly content in the process. Uh, Anthony Fantano, forever.